very pleased to have David Bernstein. I was going to say an old friend, but then I realized that doesn't come across quite the right way. So I suggested I would say a long time friend, the new term that we need to use. As I'm getting older, I, I probably, no, no, I'm not an old friend, just a long time. Long time and yeah. uh, we're starting out the, the Technology News Council again. We got, I think, a very excellent piece of uh, software. They even take it through that. I'll let him introduce himself and to the CX. But uh, for those of you who are not on the West Coast, they had a small earthquake this morning, an atmospheric river coming through. I'm not sure what we've missed, maybe tornadoes and maybe, I don't know, cyclones or so. But other than that, we probably see that sometime in April. But uh, again, I'm very, very pleased you're all here, and I think you'll be entertained. And as David is kind enough to say, if you've got a question, if you've not used Teams before, on the menu bar, there's a raised hand. Do so, I'm going to monitor the chat and such, and then let me know if you can either ask a question, or if you've got a question you just want to put in chat, that's fine, I'll just monitor that. So, David, it is yours, take away. Thank you very much. Oh, um, thanks for having me, Noah, I'm pleased to be here. Uh, for I'll just double down on what you had said there, Noah. Uh, everybody, please, as, you, if, as we go through things, um, please, if you have questions, Make sure you uh, put them into the chat and we'll work to answer them right away. We also can do some Q&A at the end. Um, I'm going to go on share and put that out to OK. And Nova, are we seeing my screen? Yes. Perfect. OK, so greetings, everybody. David Bernstein here from Pivot CX. Um, Nova was making the comment about longtime friends, and not, we won't call ourselves old, but I'll admit that I've been kicking around trying to do these this kind of work for the better part of almost three decades now. Um, super passionate about the intersection between people, process, and technology, and um, more importantly, how at the end of the amazing outcomes you can get when 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 you really think through those kind of flows. Um, and so what I want to show you today is the latest uh, project or company that I'm working uh, with. It's really focused on changing the game on how recruiting gets done. Um, there's lots of solutions out there that are uh, offering automation and communication, this is and that. Um, really what, what I'm going to show you today is a comprehensive recruiting communications hub that really brings together, it's a, a unified communication solution that brings together text, voice, video, email, vo uh, chat, uh, and a growing number of, uh, uh, there'll be a growing number of other communication channels that we'll bring into the, the solution over time. But we really see ourselves as a communication hub where, where, the, where the place where the communication and engagement happens. We're not trying to be a system of record. We would see ourselves as layered on top of um, or layered into. Um, and but by being a hub, one of the, the other things that we've uh, realized and acknowledged is that uh, we're really in the in the middle. We're in the thick of things. So uh, how you get people into a conversation is, is a core part of the product set as well. So getting people ingested in so that you can then have those conversations and then you can uh, then manage the, the conversation flow to the next step. That kind of really kind of comprehensive thinking around how conversation and workflow tie together with a business process in the status and steps. And so today I'm going to really uh, will primarily be focused on what's going on in this area relative to recruiting uh, for talent acquisition. But I'll, I'll preview for you that I, I've got customers today who are using our solution for sales and marketing, for conferences, for uh, HR operations, uh, for talent management, workforce deployment. There's a number of other ways that, uh, that our, our solution could be leveraged. So, uh, and we can save some of that conversation from the end um, to kind of explore if uh, the, could you do this kind of stuff. Uh, our mission where we started as a business was to basically remove friction from a process that's really inefficient. As, as many of us know, the, you know, uh, there's a favorite phrase. Uh, folks might like to say recruiting is broken. Um, I'm not a fan of saying that. I, I believe that when things are broken, they don't work at all. 
Um, but what I could sign up for is, is that it's a highly inefficient process where there's lots of waste, there's lots of cycle time that's uh, and money and resources that are that are not used uh, efficiently. And as a result, you create very frustrating experiences for candidates, recruiters, and hiring managers. And more importantly, the outcome is, you know, um, delayed recruiting, uh, which then, you know, if recruiting is the lifeline that feeds the company, the, the new talent, then you're obviously are, are having a negative impact on, on the, you know, time to value in terms of getting people on board and meeting the business need that those new candidates were meant to, uh, are meant to support. So when you can make the entire process from end to end, from discovery through onboarding into day one and beyond, when you can remove the friction that makes communication and workflow challenging, then a lot of other good outcomes can cascade from that. Um, and, uh, what you're going to see with our solution is that it's really focused on all participants. We really think about things holistically from a team perspective um, and how does the team interact and interoperate to kind of get that work done as well. It's not a siloed solution that's just meant for candidates or just meant for recruiters. It's it's meant for the entire, all the stakeholders that participate in the process. Um, as I said before, the, the concept of a uh, multi-channel, some, some might say the phrase omni-channel, but a, a unified communication solution um, that really takes the best practices from a number of other solutions that are already used throughout the business. If we think about how sales kind of led the charge with CRM, um, marketing teams led the charge with marketing automation solutions, um, contact center BPO teams have, have learned how to engage with literally hundreds to thousands of people a day, um, ticketing systems that help you, you know, track and know where work is in the process. Um, the, if, if you had a solution that was the best of all of that, but now focused on talent solutions that brought together current communication uh, uh, channels, then you're going to, if you already can start to imagine what that might look like, and that's what we'll show you today, but that that's really what Pivot CX is, is we are a multi-channel solution that's been verticalized for all talent use cases. Um, Especially right now, our, our go to market is focused on, on the recruiting uh, cycle. So we, we have a, a focus on making sure that things are blazingly fast without uh, without having to kind of give up uh, quality, I'll, I'll say. Um, but the idea here is that you can when you can make the process really work, then other great outcomes cascade from that. Uh, ask yourself. Do any of these, these are just some of the examples, but if, you know, one of the things that we, we clearly know that recruiting is a people-centric process, there's a whole lot of conversation, no pun intended, out there about trying to leverage chatbots and, and now we'll certainly be, uh, all the chat GPT will, um, conversations will re-energize, you know, leveraging digital assistance for some amount of the process and those certainly have a place we actually uh, have a we we plug that in into our process as well. Um, no, was there something coming up? So I can't see the screen here, so I can only see what's on my slides. Was there anything down? No, uh, nothing at this moment except a question that comes from me. But you may be ready to cover this later. But you know the, the idea that you've got uh, the multi-channel perspective, and it's really capturing all forms of communication that we're logically going to see in this recruiting process. Are you finding that employers are having to change their thinking, i.e. from the job board all the way through the, the end process of an offer letter? It just strikes me that we are so linear in our thinking and it's all paper based. I'm just curious what your what your experience has been on that. Uh, well, so there's definitely. How do I say I, I use a phrase all the time. I, I call it uh, learned helplessness. Um, I, I, there's a a place in the world where you where, where you can get accustomed, resigned, <laughs> uh, might be another way to say it, but where you where you basically think that this is the way life needs to be, and there might not be a, another way to kind of manage it. And so that that that's a lot of where recruiters live, um, and T8 teams, where where there's this belief that this is the way, this is as good as it gets, <laughs> and as a result. 
they're, they, the opening the eyes to see that there actually is a better way, there is another way, and then the, the cascading impact to your process and how you think about engaging with people and what you want to say and how you want to say it and what channel you say it on. Adding texting into your communication flow is not the same as just adding email. There's a whole other strategy on how you leverage some of these other tech, uh, other kind of communication tools. And I think that's the part that, whether it's recruiting or HR more, more broadly, that that's, um, there's certainly, there's, there's teams that focus on communication, like, you know, announcements and transformation and change management. Um, but really thinking about a communication strategy holistically, no, we're not seeing mo most of our customers yet really think that way. Um, and the irony is that if we all, um, well, I'll, I'll admit, I'll, I'll raise my hand here. I don't know if you guys can see me here, but I'm raising my oh, hand. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, I'm old enough to remember, we used to say to candidates, uh, 1995, true story, right? We used to say to candidates, can you please fax me your resume? Um, and at that time, that was the fastest way to get information from people, right? You, you went from a snail mail to suddenly someone could get you something literally within a heartbeat. Um, today, if you asked a candidate to fax you your resume, <laughs> fax, me their, fax, you, uh, fax you their resume, right? It's going to actually delay the process. What yes. used to be vogue and novel and the way to do things has changed. Just, just like Pony Express to telegraphs, to right to uh, to telephones, right? De communication has evolved over the years. We all know it. Um, it didn't stop once we hit mobile phones, right? When we got to the mobile phone, that was great, where we could reach people when they were no longer just at at home or at their desk at work. So the mobile phone kind of made it feel like we could reach people anywhere. But what if you flash forward? Where the, where the evolution has gone now is that candidates have decided, uh, consumers, I think, in general, ask yourself this question. If you get a phone, a phone call from a caller ID you don't recognize, how often, what percentage of the time do you answer it? And if you're like most people, then you're probably saying very rarely. And what happens is, right, it's not a caller ID that I recognize. It, it, it's not on my contacts list. It ends up as uh, it might end up as a voicemail. The vast majority of people I speak to don't answer those, uh, don't listen to those voicemails, and then that triggers. Well, I want how do I get a hold of this person? Well, then I'm gonna email them, and then I'm gonna hope that they might see it in in, in a busy inbox that's cluttered with all their other spam. And maybe at the end of a long bit work day, then they might get to the, to their email. And so, following the 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 idea that. Everything changes. That's the one constant. We right. We know that everything is constantly evolving. This whole idea of how communications and, and the way that we, what channels we use for communications, has dramatically changed in the last five, ten years. And yet, the vast majority of the HR teams and TA teams are still trying to use previously popular communication tools instead of leveraging the tools of choice that are that are more in use today. Um, so. Yeah. Oh, uh, a long answer to your short question, no. Um, no, yes, I, I things think have changed, and we and we're not seeing. We, my best implementations of our solution are typically done with a consulting team in in tow to help them think through the the ramifications and the change management and how to optimize for for uh, a new world of engaging uh, and creating better experiences. Well, no, you've answered the question extremely well, and 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 in all honesty, uh, there's always been a, a bad. A pet peeve of mine, if you will, that HR doesn't market itself well. They don't understand what it means to truly market, both internally and externally. And so, to your point, things have changed vastly. Communication channels are 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 different. Your approach and what you have to say in those communication channels are different. And so, they're missing the bet. I liked what you said too. It it, it takes somebody from the outside sometimes to point out there's a better way to do this. Take a look at these other other ramifications by moving to text, let's say, or whatever. Um, I'm kind of curious, are you also running into the fact that IT's tightening of the cybersecurity world encroaches a little bit into this being, you know, uh, uh, not everybody's going to use their company phone or their company email looking for a job per se, but, you know, quite literally, I'm sure there's a portion that's seeing things and doing things. Is that getting in the way of this? 
it doesn't get in the way. It's certainly, though, there's a growing awareness that data is collected in lots of ways, not necessarily just through forms. And when you're when you add in the fact that you're going to have conversation, and it could be uh, an uh, right an audio or a phone or video, uh, mean or on text, but all these additional ways of collecting data from people, and then that data flows through the wiring into these systems of record. That that's kind of been the the aha moment for some of the uh, IT teams that I'm working with when I'm going through my infosec, is kind of just helping them understand what is that data and what's the data retention. The, the same. Kind of general concerns apply you know how are we you know pen testing and making sure that you know the system's safe and no one can hack it and all these other kinds of general same concerns but they also apply in in, in the world of communications so thank you uh, and i think we're clear on all the other questions so far so we're good okay. yeah so look there's some things in here but you know the the the, the reality is that most teams today are trying to do the work that they've always done in the way that's always been done, uh, which includes then uh, existing communication approaches, but also the processes. Um, the the if, if, if we, you know, if we stay focused on recruiting, um, recruiting by design, we often talk about a funnel and funnels have very wide open tops right and then they get narrow as you go towards the bottom and by definition that means we're we're, we're taking people out of the process that aren't really a good uh a good fit for that particular conversation a particular opening right and, and so the vast majority of recruiting we, we think of recruiting as a hiring activity but it's actually mostly a rejection business and if the vast majority of people that enter the process will not make it through to the end point then how you take care of that can those candidates as well. This is not you know, candidate experience, uh, which is kind of in our name, Pivot CX. How do you pivot your candidate experience? Uh, what our customers have been telling us, so it's not just about candidates, it's the employee experience as well. When you're not engaging, when you're not listening to people, right? Chatbots are great for managing from an automation, but you can't have an engaged conversation. Chat GPT will make you think it's listening, right? But it's really, you're not going to build that relationship with the candidate the same way, right? At some point, people listen, talking and listening to each other is how you're going to build relationships. And we all know it's talent that makes the difference between company A and B and how do you build those relationships with the right people, especially, you know, if you've gone to the trouble of putting in a CRM and you're holding on to these candidates for a future engagement, but then you never engage in. Um, I, I talk to candidate uh, customers all day long who talk to me about how they continue to start their process with running new job ads. But then they see a whole bunch of people that they've already previously <laughs> had in their system. And then they try to re-engage with these candidates, uh, trying to cold call them and leave them voicemails and emails. Um, a tremendous amount of cycle time spent trying to reach out to engage with people that for the most part most of them won't be who they want to move forward in the process with and and so if you could change the, the that paradigm where you're engaging with only your high value candidates and you're using the channels that they want to engage with you on you can actually you know you can ex significantly in increase the cycle while while making sure everybody has a quality experience um, this last one on the on the screen, though, I'm I'm fond of this uh, this phrase here, this this concept of you know it's it's really a race for skills, in, in a talent constrained world that we now live in, right? The ability to be able to be the first into a conversation, since the vast majority of candidates will accept the first offer given, if you want to be that first employer to make the offer, then it's imperative that you be able to have a process that supports being able to get in front of them and stay in front of them and keep them engaged with you throughout the cycle um, while simultaneously taking care of the candidates that you're not going to move forward with at this time. Um, but being able to do that with speed and, um, and efficiency, uh, personalized approaches, uh, that, that's where I think that you know, you're going to see the whole concept of CX or, or EX the, the experience comes from how people feel after they reflect on how they were treated during the during a process and that and that statement of of whether it was good or bad is kind of the sum total sentiment of of how they uh, felt that it happened um, 
I have a tremendous number of customers telling me that they're recruiting candidates in 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 orders of magnitude faster time frames than the previous that now they are recruiting they they're hiring candidates who then tell them that after those candidates have been hired those candidates are just beginning to be notified by other employers for future <laughs> for opportunities but meanwhile they've already been hired somewhere else right so which end of that uh, conversation do you want to be on do you want to be on the end trying to hire somebody who's already been hired right all the good people are now taken up or would you like to uh right be the one first in the door and and kind of have have the pick of the litter so to speak right so um these are some of the things about why it matters is what we're finding over and over again is that this ability to kind of drive out the inefficiencies in recruiting save time save money uh increase your, the velocity of your process no, no. Dave, if you don't mind i'll let me make a very quick observation then let's get back to the presentation um and it looks like uh, someone is going to be asking a question besides myself but you it turns out that you know as you call it race for skills the lead article in the sherm newsletter this morning was higher for skills which is pretty doggone close they are recognizing that the idea is it's just not you know we are we're, we've got a lot of talent out there but you're just not looking for them well enough. You're not screening them efficiently enough, et cetera. And it is truly hiring for the potentials of what these people bring to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, something that is very, very different. Um, what's interesting is that um, I've seen a lot of recruiting packages that are trying very hard to make the recruiter more conversant with the candidate. Uh, there's a couple out there that you know, if I'm hiring an IT person and I don't know Java from a hole in the ground, quite literally, this software will help me make really good intelligent questions to the mm -hmm. Java candidate. Sounds great, but I love what you said. We have recruiters with one real goal, building a relationship. The organization's culture and so on is coming through that recruiter to the candidate. That's their job is to build a relationship. These other tools are not doing anything along those lines. At least I'm person, that's my own opinion, but I don't think that's helping the, the situation. I think the ability to talk to them on lots of the different media, do that in different ways in which they want to, they're more accustomed to, that's building a relationship. And to your point, speed is everything right now. Speed is everything. Right now. So anyway, um, Wanda has asked a quick question here. What ATSs do you currently interface or integrate with? Um, I'm going to answer that in a second. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, sure. No, that's, that's fine. Great, that's right. great oh, one, one is a very patient person. She she All deals right. with me. So that's bad enough. <laughs> well, thank you Wanda, for for uh, for teeing me up. That'll come shortly here. Um, recently uh, asked a couple hundred uh, recruiting folks on LinkedIn to go chime in with what they thought were the most painful parts of running the process. I've I've led numerous workshops. Uh, it continues Th this whole idea about getting and keeping in touch with candidates is the most painful part of the process. Um, the, the irony is that if you ask candidates what's the most frustrating thing about being a candidate in the process, they'll tell you the lack of communication and lack of being able to hear from recruiters. And if you ask hiring managers what they hate most about it, they'll tell you that they're not, they also aren't hearing enough, right? It's it, the three key constituents in this process are all cranky about the same thing. and and. And, and that's not a new thing, right? Uh, it's and and yet here we are with this big pile of newer technologies, and yet that still seems to be the topic. And in fact, if you look at the talent board that runs the candidate experience research, they they not only have they found that uh, in the 2022 that can, uh, candidate communication is still the number one reason for the uh, high candidate resentment scores, but that that candidate resentment went up a good 50 percent over the previous year. So it's not only a pervasive problem, but it's an ongoing increasing problem. Um, and how ironic that we're sitting on top of all this technology. So um, that's what I want to show you today is how do we kind of think about uh, this. I'm going to show you some example of how to pull you in to a, a conversation and how we can do engage. We can talk about some of these results and obviously we've got Q&A peppered throughout it. Um, we offer a variety of solutions. Um, we both have we have a human call center team, um, which is actually how our business started. We were doing conversation management for customers at the top of the funnel. Think of us as a pro as a, prov a fractional RPO 
that uh, built a piece of software for the last three years to manage tons of conversation for customers so we could deliver to them only the high value candidates. And as a result of that, building and, and using that software, more and more customers said, can I use it too? Can I use it directly? And so we moved from a services model to being more of a product SaaS kind of company. Um, that said, I still have some customers who are, are leveraging my call center team. Um, David, I'm sorry. There, mm -hmm. there are two questions out there. Well, I, you, we were going to answer the one about the integration, but Roy's asked a question here, and then Michelle came right behind that as well. Uh, Roy's question was, would most recruiters say that they're too busy trying to fill the role to build relationships with candidates that may or may not be a fit for the current rec they're trying to fill? And I, I'm, I'll wait for your comment on why we measure them on that. But nonetheless, and then Michelle has said, Probably, but as a previous candidate, I can tell you that building a relationship with the recruiter leaves a great first impression of the company for me. So for sure. I'll leave it to you to answer that. <laughs> right. So one of the things that we we bring to the table, Nova, is not just a piece of software, but we bring some thinking on how to reorganize the way recruiting gets done. And uh, specifically, um, if we think about there's all the work that needs to get done in, rec in the recruiting process, and then what's the work that a recruiter specifically needs to do? A lot of teams say, just give the work to the recruiters <laughs> uh, and that bogs them down. It's a wonder, so while we can, uh, I said in the beginning of recruiting, I don't believe is broken, I believe it's highly inefficient. One of those super inefficient areas is that we ask recruiters to carry an inordinate amount of requisitions. I talked to a prospect the other day that literally their, can, their recruiters are carrying 50 plus recs on average, right? If you have 50 recs and five candidates each at a minimum, that's 250 people a day plus the 50 hiring managers. How could one person realistically engage with 300 people every day? Let alone the fact that they've got a jockey on average 10 systems, most of which aren't integrated. They've got hiring managers who, who don't get back to them or want to hold out for the golden candidate that doesn't really exist, right? There's just so many kind of challenges and obstacles it's a surprise that any amount of recruiting gets done um, but but the idea here is if you can redefine the roles who does what so um, so the conversation how do you build relationships well you focus the relationship building activity at the recruiter level so you, how do you, you know, but you can't build relationship with a hundred percent all candidates don't necessarily during that particular requisition no not everybody is going to make it through the gauntlet. So for that particular rec, you want to develop the relationship really deeply with those that are most interesting. But how do you also keep a relationship nurtured with the candidates that do come into the process that you might that you have to respectfully exit from the current flow, but might want to engage with them at a future date? And that's that's the challenge, right? Is that most CRM solutions are tracking relationships but aren't giving you the ability to really nurture and engage with candidates at scale. And so if you can separate out the work duties um, and use more current kinds of ways to do the engagement, the, the compounded effect is, is an amazing um, ability to give recruiters back time in their day that really can be leveraged for the real recruiting work, not all of the work. Am I making sense? Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just uh, like you say that the, the recruiter is, is there to. I, I I truly believe, like you say, they are asked to do many, many, many things, of which they really were not really even hired for. Their their, their job was to build a relationship. Um, I think the metric of you know position filled and so on has always been the incorrect one. I'd love to say, and I I have to say that many of the clients that I've worked with, I won't say that through my advice, but let's just say they are judging the hire. A year later and see where they are do they are they moving along on a fast track you know in other words what we're doing is we're trying to measure and quantify the value of the hire that we made instead of just looking at we fill the position you know i i can make so many widgets and fit them in the box and ship them out the door and that i'm i'm a, a top producer but sure. you know half the boxes are empty so anyway um but Before you got, we go down, I didn't want don't to forget do Wanda's question. I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. I'm, say that again. Uh, recruiters don't do the hiring, right? Hiring managers yeah. own the hiring. So yeah. recruiters own filtering through and passing forward and creating a slate. And so this these metrics that are focused on 
uh, time to hire maybe yeah. aren't necessarily as good as, uh, you know, how long is it taking you to do the part of the work that re the recruiting team needs to own? Right. Um, and how do right? But uh, and one other quick thing I'll say, the best of CRM I mentioned earlier, right? So engaging and, and keeping track of relationships. Uh, but one of the things that the sales team have long learned is that there's a sales executive and there's another role in sales teams typically called a BDR, right? A business development rep whose job is to kind of do that initial engagement with the pro with the lead to find out how qualified that lead actually is. And that concept of you, you would never give a lead just randomly to a salesperson and say, now go find out if it's qualified. Salespeople take qualified leads and run with it, right? And if you could do something similar where you have a front end uh, kind of role, many of our customers are starting you know, to adopt a, a title of a role they're calling a CDR, a candidate development rep, whose front wow. role whose front role is to do some of that initial screening and be able to then manage the conversation so that you've got um, only the high value candidates being passed along to the recruiter so the recruiter can do that recruiting work but not have to do all the work that needs to happen during the recruiting cycle. Am I making, Fantastic. Yeah. You, you're making dramatic <laughs> changes in here. So again, I didn't want to forget one, Wanda's question, but I also want to make, so we're about the half hour point. Um, yep. I'll let you, I'll, I'll shut up and start letting you go back to your presentation. My apologies. It's okay. So <laughs> we're currently, uh, we position ourselves as a, as a communication hub. We, we see ourselves as a, as a layer in between getting folks into conversations, managing the conversation, and then um, next steps. So that conversation flow, uh, that, uh, having a console where you can have those conversations, but that's by definition, that means you have to get people in and you have to migrate, the, um, um, transition them over to the next step. So integration is huge for us. On the front end, we're integrated with, actually I can put it up here, I think we mentioned it. I have 50 plus ATS integrations today and growing based on customer demand. We're also integrated with job boards. I have import and export capabilities. We browser plugins. We can leverage Zapier uh, APIs all over the place. I have assessments. I have integration with an assessment uh, provider right now. I have another integration partner that um, does video. Um, I have a labor market intelligence partners. Um, again, how do you leverage other tools through a cycle uh, at the right place, the right time you want to display this video, but how do you get that video out to the candidate, let's say over our text message, right? And so the two have to really kind of, it all has to kind of come together. So we see ourselves as this hub where all these different kind of communications need to flow. Sometimes it's an automated message, sometimes it's person to person. Wanda, does this answer your question about uh, integration? So, yeah. Um, if you don't mind going back to the slide, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll hold on the question if you want to answer, but I see the word re-engagement on the passive candidates. I'd love to understand what that means, both capturing and filing away all my conversations with me across all these different channels, mm -hmm. and how you go back and re-engage to do that on a very positive, proactive perspective is what I'm, I'm thinking that says. Sure, it is exactly that. So are the two biggest use cases of our solution from a recruiting perspective are this apply to high where somebody can express interest they're on a job board or they saw a banner ad and they're clicking through they want to express interest but from that moment that they're expressing interest the time to conversation is literally under five minutes literally from expression to conversation uh, within five minutes for all your candidates what if you could have that kind of capability um, the, the inverse of that is now you've collected a bunch of folks how do you get back in touch with them? And before you start spending money on maybe new job ads, how do you bring folks into the conversation that you previously um, have paid? You know, you've done recruitment marketing campaigns, and you've brought them into your, your into your pool. Uh, why don't you start there first before you start spending money to run more job ads to only end up re, you know reacquiring many of the same candidates that you already have in your database? So passive candidates are. Right, so there, you know, how do you get them to know that you have a new opportunity and, and, and bring them quickly into the process? Imagine, though, if you've got a, um, we've, your profile is on, on the system 
and now and you've given us permission to uh, to let you know if there's a new opportunity like that in the future, we let you know that there's a new one. You know, hey, no new opportunity here for a sales position. Would you be interested? You pl you reply yes, and that's all you have to do. You just you just hit the Y on your on your phone, <laughs> and suddenly you're now getting messages about scheduling time and all of this. Right? You can complete. That is quick. Yeah. yeah, literally within a second, you can pu push out a job alert to a group of people that you know are in the zone from your past engagement. And how do you quickly give them the ability to say yes and 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 start to engage with them before you start maybe running new job ads? Let's say very very different approach than the training of, of resumes and and saying well these guys were in the pile last time for this type of job. And maybe it'll be somewhat related to this. So let me send something like an email back out to these folks. And so on. I like right. that. Um, Lance had asked a question in there uh, on your roadmap. Is Oracle Recruiting Cloud on your roadmap? Yes. I see Taleo is there. So I suspect <laughs> you, you've got to put in Oracle somewhere. <laughs> uh, we're just waiting for that first customer to to kind of come forward on that. So yes, we're building these out as as there's customer demand. But um, we uh, we are actually we're leveraging a, a, a an iPaaS style solution um, to accelerate our time to market to bring these integrations forward. Um, so the, that that vendor is basically acts as our um, outsourced integration team. Um, all I have to do is let them know that I have a customer who needs a customer on ORC and then off they go. So the first time obviously might take, you know, four to six weeks to build it. But once we have the integration on the on the in the in the, in the library, then um, turning on a new integration is usually a two to three week effort. So you bring to mind a very quick question, and that is, let's say I am a Taleo customer and I'm going to the Oracle Cloud. Can I put Pivot CX in today? And then migrate when I move to the next level, if you will, of the Oracle products. Or, you know, in other words, to me, you sit outside of whatever I might be doing on a on a major system upgrade or conversion. Why not start you now? Why can't I use you right now? And it sounds like we could, I suspect. Hundred percent. We can easily. So again, we can do file import. Uh, we can do a, a a web scrape. I'll show you guys that here shortly. Um, you can manually add one person at a time. I think that would be the death if you had a lot of folks. <laughs> but uh, but there is you know there's there's tools there's API hooks where we also bring in folks in. But I've got one of my customers right now. Um, by the way, we're very pilot and trial friendly. So a lot of our prospects start with us in a in a non integrated way, or a semi integrated way. The semi integration is um, they send us an email with a file attachment in it every day, and we parse the data from the attachment into the system for them. So again, it's a once a day, it's a batch. It's not the beautiful API kind of real time integration, but we can do these semi integrated ways, and especially in the beginning to kind of start to help the customer understand what value could look like before they have to kind of fully commit. I ask that question, Lance, on your behalf, because I, I've been through in the middle of conversion, you find solutions that would fit your new one, but you're not quite sure if it's the old one. It sounds like you'd do that now. Not have to work, but wait for Oracle to do anything. So right. anyway, no, uh, please go on. I apologize. Yeah. So no, I'm going to start showing some things here, but you know, the, so this is just a recap of some of these uh, kind of key messages. The, these the challenges that folks have learned to kind of live with today, right? The, there's no recruiting team on the planet. Ask yourself, do you know? Do you know anybody who wakes up every day and says, "What can we do as a team to purposely give?" Our candidates a horrible experience, right? No, nobody says that. Nobody, and yet the the data is rife with all sorts of you know recent studies. I mentioned the the, the talent board's most recent findings that it, it not only is it a problem, it's a pervasive and growing problem, right? And yet no one means to purposely create poor candidate experience, which at the talent board they call candidate resentment. But what if you could be able to engage with 100% of your candidates real time? This, this is where I'm saying is I think people have learned to live and believe that there isn't another way. And so my biggest challenge is to kind of get the word out that there are other ways to be able to kind of manage a process to be able to achieve these amazing outcomes. Um, what we do know is that there's a tremendous amount of candidates that take the first job they're offered. Candidates don't wait around first to see if they're going to get second, a second offer, a, a better offer. You want to be the first one in. And if your process is like what Sherman, Robert Half are finding, 
that it could go anywhere from, you know, basically four weeks to nearly three months. I mean, it's crazy, right? Imagine your process taking that long just to get somebody in and who's going to wait around in this talent constrained market. Candidates are taking a first offer and they're moving on, especially if you're in a high volume hiring uh, kind of scenario. Then they, you know, if they can get 25 cents an hour more somewhere else, they're they're gone, right? They're not going to be part of your world at all. So, being able to kind of engage with these people uh, and, and kind of do that in a way that where you know 100% of your candidates can get engaged, but they don't have to all be engaged through your recruiters. And they also you can leverage automation for some amount of that engagement. And when you kind of put that package together, you create a world where you can get and keep in touch with your candidates throughout the entire cycle. Um, actual quotes from, from, from customers. I won't point to anybody in the crowd, but I would say that my experience working with healthcare co companies, the, let's say the much sought after nurses and things of that nature, the clinicians, you would get a job offer and before you know it, they're, they're gone because they've got a better one. And okay. to your point, um, I, I think, as I said earlier, I think speed is is everything right now. And uh, so that I I suspect you didn't, did you show us a couple of clients? I apologize. I don't think you sent us a, a client list, but you did mention a couple. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Well, I can mention more. I um, noticing also we're on the 15 yeah. minute mark, so um, I, I can. I don't think there's any industry. I'll put it that way. I don't think there's any industry that you're predominant in right now. You, it's everything and everybody. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, but the, the sweet spot is going to be high volume is typically a part of it, but the high volume, no, what we see is it comes in three flavors. High volume, I just need to hire a lot of people across a lot of categories, mm -hmm. uh, or high volume in a specific category, either low complexity jobs, or like you were saying, nursing, for example, high complexity jobs, jobs that require, you know, a license in special education, even so truck drivers, cosmetologists, right? So they fall in, even though they may not be the biggest money making jobs, they still tend to, you know, they they want to be treated differently. They, they don't want to be in, in the whole, um, in the mill, right? <laughs> they, they mm -hmm. The high volume, high complexity candidates are, are looking to be treated a little bit more special, right? Yeah. Uh, Melissa's asked a question here and that, that kind of touches upon that. Are you seeing any particular traction in the in certain types of market, other company size, industries, et cetera? And I think you you hit a couple of that, but any any particular types of companies or sizes? Um, I've I had one, uh, not a, not a ton of these, but I have customers that need to hire only three people, but the need for speed is what drove their use of Pivot CX because in what they because their process was moving slower, all the great candidates. This was a virtual reality developer. Uh, company they were losing all their candidates by the time they could get around to them and get them through the cycle they were already hired by somebody else so they they opted to flip over to use pivot cx in that scenario but for the most part uh, you know customers who have uh, that the payback on this right because you can implement this in in two weeks or less you can be up and running and start to uh you know you're going to save money between uh more efficient use of your marketing dollars um your, your productivity uh, if you're, um, you, you know, in some of my customers are able to sunset some of the point solutions that they bought previously because Pivot CX includes video, for example, and some of these other solutions that they've had to buy independent contracts for that now they can consolidate. So, making money and saving money uh, are options and the ROI. Um, so, uh, again, a longer answer to the short question. I, we have customers from. You know, high volume fast food and and cosmetology and trucking and healthcare and you name the industries. It, it's what's really common is that they understand if they don't move quickly, they're going to lose out on their candidates, and and that's frustrating for them. I like it. Uh, we've got some time here. If anybody in the crowd here can wants to participate in the demo, if you pick up your phone right now, open up your camera and scan this QR code, it will open up your texting app. And pre-populate the word or the the word TRC, and pre-populate this pick this phone number 317-449-8782. All you need to do is hit the send button, and that will pull you into a process. Uh, I'm gonna I'll leave this up on the screen. Okay. Well then, uh, as so, we'll leave that up there. Let me ask you a couple of questions then. So, 
you you diluted the fact that pivot CX the CX meaning candidate experience. Um, I see the tremendous possibilities of the roadmap of this product going further into other parts of HR and record time. And I'm I'm thinking to myself things along the lines of uh, employee surveys and maybe you know let me. Let me. Oh gosh, I I I can. It just keeps roiling in my mind here to the point where I'm on, I'm not even sure where to start. Is that kind of the roadmap? Hundred percent. Customers are now saying, "Well, we've done all of this. I got them onboarded. I can collect documents. Even I'll show you. We can do some document collection here. But um, now I've got them onboarded. But how's it going for them on their first week? Their you know first day, their first week, their first month? You want to do check-in surveys, for example. Yeah. Well, now you've talked to them, and now they're now they're on the payroll. <laughs> I mean, what if you could continue? I, I, we just signed up Kelly Services this week. Um, their focus is now how do they deploy on-demand translators at hospitals, and so they want to be able to use it for shift reminders that your shift is about to start, and they can call in sick through texting in a keyword, for example, um, and use the system to be able to quickly find people that are on the bench to then re, uh, redeploy people who are not maybe previously scheduled. Total example of, you know, the need for speed. Um, yeah, and and that, it drives operational efficiency. Well, and, and again, I'm going to go back to your, your statement way back when, when you said, we need to rethink the process. What can technology do for us that's different than what we've done before? And you just mentioned, my shift is coming up. I can call in sick. All of this on text. I can do, and then I can have a rescheduled situation on a call for, for reserves. And I mean, to me, it's just, it's a, I hate to call it anything less than what you would like to call it, but I would call it an aggregator. It's an aggregator of communication. It truly is a, a pass through that says, I have need and I have, a, I have a talent to fulfill that. How do I schedule that and how do I coordinate it? It's, that, it's got some tremendous policy. I, I'm going to keep a, a real close eye on it. Uh, so this is the demo example. Uh, I, if some of you have done this, you should have gotten a text message um, that would have said thanks for your interest and, and it would link you over to this particular page where you can then fill in um, this information where you give your, you know, it's an example of imagine someone who's seeing a job uh, and they want to express interest. Um, you can even do some screening questions and so the candidate who's not immediately uh, a match could be told you know no thank you for this particular opening but the candidate that actually is an initial match now is being given the uh, response to say here's the link to jill's calendar can you please schedule time on her calendar we'd love to talk to you and we monitor for those call to actions to make sure that the candidates are actually following through and if they don't then there's kind of drip style kind of follow up messaging that takes care of the candidate to kind of remind them that there's, you know, that they're still interested in wanting to speak to them. Can you click here to kind of get that schedule going? Um, so, so did we, any we, we consider, David, that what you showed on that form are kind of could be considered the knockoff questions that traditionally sit in a, in a position description, i.e., you must have a BA in something or other. You got to, you know, 25 years of experience in it. The knockoff questions, I am finding, and all honestly, when I talk to my, my clients, people are ignoring them. You know, and so what are you going to punish me for, for kind of stretching the truth? I didn't say I didn't have that experience. I just don't have it at 25 years. So in a sense, are you kind of moving that into this text world a little bit to, to help the screen them a little faster, a little better? That's the idea is right. What what can you capture either, let's say, on Indeed and ask those kind of basic questions yeah. and help put your initial time, maybe the CDR is the first person scheduling to have that kind of in, in conversation. In okay. fact, let, let me kind of give you that. Let, I'll jump to that example. We use our product, as you might imagine, for our own recruiting. Um, there's a guy that I saw in the data here. So let me pull that one up. This guy named Bradley. Um, Bradley not only responded, but he responded when our team was out of office. So he was asked, would he like to uh, engage? And he said yes. So when the, when Janae came in in the morning at 730 in the morning, you can kind of see here, she went back and forth, but between 730 and 820, I think it is. So you can see she followed the script. She asked all the questions. And by 
where is there, eight, seven, eight, 21, <laughs> she was able to collect enough information that she knew he was a viable candidate. She assigned him to the hiring manager, routed him over to them, and then that hiring manager came online Right, and began to have a conversation with Bradley on the same phone number throughout the cycle. So, right, the, the, there was a uh, an automated. In this case, there was an automated agent. Then there was the the you know the the tier one CDR who then routed this over to the hiring manager in this particular example. Um, where where does the resume fit in this process now? You know, uh, honestly, I, I I'm almost going to say I don't have my resume stacked on a PDF in my phone. Or maybe it's sitting up on a one day it takes me to down, you know, forever to download it. Does the resume even play a part anymore? Um, it doesn't have to, uh, but you see, we can collect documents here either through the integration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. If I uh, let me kind of flip over to my demo team, and let's see here. There was um, actually kind of come in to the candidates. Uh, I'm. There's a bit of a bug at the moment. I didn't capture all the names here for some reason. I got to ask my team to look at why the form didn't drop the name in. Who who on the call here? No, can we find out who who this is? I I would ask the the audience uh, if you just kind of yeah. raise your hand or open up your speaker yeah. and answer. Who is eight four five three zero four zero eight zero seven? That's me. Hey. Oh. hey. So Mr. I should have recognized that. I so Roy, I'm going to ask if you could upload a document. I'm going to give you a link here. So if you could, so you should have got a text message to kind of provide some documents for everybody on the screen. What Roy is getting is he's getting a page that looks like this, and I'm going to um, here. Let me just grab a picture. Uh, I'll just kind of throw this onto Roy's record just to kind of for giggles and grins. Um, so if I come back into Roy's record. <clears throat> And that picture, that, that that document, that item that I just uploaded is here. Um, Roy, if you do something similar, you can either attach it, uh, attach something like we do to text messages in general, and it will show up in the center console, or you can respond to that URL I gave you um, here, and it will then uh, attach in the, in the side panel. But all of this data know that we collect, the transcripts and the documents then are passed through uh, data that can then go into the customer's ATS. We're not looking to be the system of record to hold any of this. I'm I'm not seeing the the link to upload a document. It says it was delivered. You didn't get that link sent to you. Uh, uh here I'll give you another one. That should have come through. So you you guys you can see he got a different link address. These are one time mm -hmm. use links that are that are specific for that particular candidate at that particular point. Like that. Okay. Okay. Uh. The file. Yeah, I want to, as with no, I don't know where anything is stored on my iPhone. Don't worry. I mean, if you have a safer work picture, you don't have to do the do this part of it if you don't want to. But, um, but I'm also no. If I'm jumping in here, right? There's a a human to human conversation. Roy, yeah. if you reply back, you'll be on screen here. So just don't say anything bad about no. But uh, <laughs> right. It's too late. Too late. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I I can't find any any no. documents. Yeah, could you reply back though to the text message I just sent you? Oh, really? hi there. How have you been? Oh, oh, that was you. I thought it was uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm here on my keyboard, um, texting away from my from my laptop, though, right? And there's a one phone number attached to this team. If there's 20 recruiters on this team, they're all there's no contention. Everybody can recruit under the same phone number text, voice, or video phone calls simultaneously happening. Um, did you want to reply, no, uh, Roy? I thought I did. OK, then the telco clouds must be a little bit slower today. Um, if I click this button, Roy, do you know what's going to happen? I hear your phone ringing. Do you? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And if I close this out and click here, you're going to get a text message, Roy, that is going to ask if you can give your phone permission. But now we can go to a video call. No downloads for the video. If you're just going to give your phone permission to access your camera, if you're OK with that, Roy, then you'll show up here in the center uh, section. And there he is. There he is. There he is. 
so obviously we're on two videos, so it kind of got the echo, but um, and there's the fine thanks. And so we're having dialogue real time with people. And imagine now if I'm um, if I've got this set up, you can see I got a notification that there's two other people here that are waiting to speak to me. I've gotten a text and an email <laughs> while you guys were while I was talking to you, but I'm getting notified as well that there's people online that are responding that want to meet with me. Um, I, on my call center team, that Janae character I was showing you earlier, she's a real person. She literally spoke to over a thousand people one day by bouncing back and forth between these conversations and being notified when there was somebody. She didn't have to troll and look for things. It was pointing her directly to who, who and when and, and how to directly link into the conversation to speak to them. So it sounds like you get a sense of a workflow or ability to move a call to someone else easily enough. Thanks for the prompting. Yes, if I can, I want to complete this conversation. Or remember, we were talking about deliveries. So if I think yes. Roy's a great candidate, let me kind of score him and, and make some notes. And maybe know if you're not in the list, but I think this is a great candidate for you to take a look at. I can now invite you to be into this one conversation, right? Gotcha. Where where you would be invited to come in to, to speak to Roy, and you would have text, voice, and video. And you'd be able to see the entire thread of past conversation here. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Fantastic. I, I love the, the the in a sense and and the and again I am a huge visualization guy and here's the dashboard of things I can do. I love it. It is just very well organized. Lot, yeah. So uh, again, we one of my customers is a hair salon business. Um, we've engaged with them in a, in a very hybrid way. They have nearly three hundred thousand of their candidates that they've asked us to do an automated outreach for. A quarter, a quarter of a million of those said yes. So my team processed through a quarter of a million, 221,000 of those candidates. And now we're moving those candidates through. In their case, it's all franchise owners. So the, the high value candidates get routed to the right franchise owner who then picks up the conversation and runs with it. But now they, they know that they've got a cosmetologist who's affordable, available with licenses, ready to speak to them now. Right? Um, so I'll ask, a, I'll call it a dumb question, David, but it, it, it's something that's continued. We used to be able to tell where people were from their, their area code. Uh, but people buy cell phones and then decide, so are you pulling location code? Um, we get location. Um, actually, okay. I'll show you the one of the things that, uh, so every team has its own phone number. I'm going to come over to my demo team here. Um, mm -hmm. This phone number has, we're headquartered in Indianapolis, so we have a 317 on the demo team. But a lot of customers will, will procure a team that has their local number so candidates aren't being feeling like they're being messaged from, from India or wherever, right? right. Um, right. And candidates can call back to this phone number, but then there's a routing, a, a call redirect. So through the VOIP system, then if the candidate ever calls the phone number they're texted from, they actually get routed to a, a different number that they then can have a human to human conversation with as well. So again, we've just begun to scratch the surface. I didn't show you the, the browser plugin and, and different import tools. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, no view and I were talking as I wrap up here, but the, the idea is there, do you, do you have a canvas and you want to paint your own picture? Or do you, do you want to fill in the color on a paint by numbers where you put in your own colors, but you already want us to kind of help you define what the picture should look like. We, we have both models that we can work with you on. We have a set of core capabilities and we can kind of build these kind of conversation flows that work for you. Um, or we can say off the shelf, here's a hiring event solution. Here's a candidate re-engagement solution. Here's your reminder messaging solution so you can get people to go do their drug test or take their assessment or whatever you need them to do. So lots of different ways that the mechanism is being used. Um, I know we're running over, Noah, so I appreciate everybody's time. Today. No, absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I will uh, even offer, if you think there's more functionality, I'd be happy to bring you back, and I'm sure that we'll have this and then more of the crowd to, to well, join us. We'd if, like to do I'd something. be happy to come back. Well, what if we yeah. kind of pulse the crowd and see uh, if they'd like to learn uh, about other sure. things? And, and we'll do that. Like, Taylor, the, Put out the a, a quick email on on the link to the, the session and ask them if they'd like to have you come back. You are a very good converse, conversational presenter, so we're good on that. So, well, I appreciate but that. Again, thank you very, very much for an extremely entertaining session. Again, thank you to my Technology Group Council group.
Uh, you guys are always uh, terrific people, people to both keep us going and, and I'm sure that as a vendor, love the comments, so absolutely. Yeah, and we grow by hearing real world feedback. So, um, and if anybody, you know, learn more sessions as follow ones with me are not sales obligatory conversation. If you just right. would like to schedule some time and learn more uh, and or you have feedback about how you think the system could even be uh, more effective. Uh, we're all ears, so I appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you very much, David. Thank you, TRC, and keep your ears and eyes open. There's more to come. Take care, everyone. Have a good everybody. Have a good day. Bye bye.